Wow, I just realized something. If my Hold On CD Collection series were a person, and each chapter were a year of its life, it would be old enough now to be filling out college applications. They grow up so fast. Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Here we are with Chapter 17, believe it or not, of my whole darn CD collection. And what's crazy about this is we're at Chapter 17, and at each chapter I show you 90 of my CDs, and we're only coming up to the R's in rock and pop. we still got a couple other categories to go here. But anyway, yes, it's a very, very big collection, and something which I'll talk about in a video soon here has brought to light just how huge a collection I have, even though I kind of knew, obviously, how big a collection I have. But um, anyway, I'm thinking about trimming it down. I already have trimmed it down uh, about midway through this series. As I mentioned before, I've gotten rid of enough CDs, uh, over 150 of them or so, that this chapter, if I had started it after that CD call, this would probably be chapter 16. I would be this far along, anyway. Uh, yay math. Anyway, uh, before making this video too long, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I've got several, uh, what, uh, over a dozen uh, recent arrivals to talk about. I didn't have any in the last chapter, so this is kind of making up for it. And I hope I have not repeated any of these. Uh, I, I try not to, but I'm pretty sure these are all new to you guys. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with the uh, recent arrivals. Jeff Beck, his album Blow by Blow, this is his instrumental. Uh, I believe it was uh, Briar Cisneros in Briar's Music Showcase who recently uh, talked about this album, and I've been thinking about picking up Jeff Beck. I actually did not pick anything up of his uh, before he passed away. Uh, sh shame on me, I know. Uh, but yes, this album is a great place to start, and he, he kind of recommended it on his channel, and... Uh, it was a good recommendation, I have to say. Uh, I mean, I, I already knew, you know, everybody has said what a great guitarist Jeff Beck was, and this CD uh, backs that up, let's just say. So yeah, very, very good album. And a couple of uh, Tracy Chapman CDs. I am rebuilding my Tracy Chapman collection. I have Crossroads as well as Matters of the Heart. Matters of the Heart? Yeah, Matters of the Heart. I want to make sure and get the titles right, even though my brain farts every now and then, and uh, and uh, anyway, the next one we have, uh, I picked up Miley Cyrus's latest album, Endless Summer Vacation, a few weeks back. Pretty good. And so I decided to, uh, I think it was before that, before that one came out, I decided to check out one of her previous albums, Bangers. And I, I actually really enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, it kind of was pretty much the first big hint at um, how diverse she could be with her sounds, even on one album. And how talented she is. I mean, she's she's not just... She may have started out as a teen pop, you know, pretty one-dimensional teen pop singer. Not that she didn't have talent at the, at the get-go. But uh, yeah, this really kind of... She kind of came into her own, I think, on this album. Uh, very, very good stuff. And a couple of ones that I just picked up a couple weeks ago at House of Records. Dr. Hook and the Medicine Show. Uh, this is their debut album, Self-Titled, as well as their sophomore album, Sloppy Seconds. Uh, these two albums have pretty much their biggest hits. Uh, Sylvia's Mother, uh, Hey Lady Godiva, that's an interesting one. Uh, let's see, what, do we have? what else do we have here? Uh, Marie, Marie Laveau is a really interesting one I liked, that one. And uh, um, Sloppy Seconds probably has their, best, their biggest hits. Freaking at the Freaker's Ball, uh, Cover of the Rolling Stone, uh, Queen of the Silver Dollar, that was a really good one. Carry Me Carry. I mean, I have their Greatest Hits CD, but uh, I kind of, you know, I enjoyed that uh, enough that I decided I wanted to pick up uh, their albums and kind of take a look at, you know, their actual studio albums, and I was very happy. These were a little bit, a little bit pricey for used CDs, but uh, their used CDs are kind of, their, their early CDs are kind of hard to come by, so uh, it was a fair price, I figured. House of Records always prices things pretty fairly, so... Uh, Anyway, next up we have Spirit in the Sky, the best of Norman Greenbaum. Uh, the title track, of course, is one of his big hits. And, of course, how can you... I mean, who can forget his smash hit single, The Eggplant That Ate Chicago? I don't know if that's related to the cockroach that ate, that ate Cincinnati or not, but uh, 
that's another that's a novelty song that uh, was very popular on the Dr. Demento show. But anyway, yeah, I I had never heard of uh, the eggplant that ate Chicago before. So, uh, of course, he had his his whimsical side as well as his spiritual side with Spirit in the Sky. So, uh, he does a cover of California Earthquake. The was it a Mama Cass or Mamas and the Papas song? I cannot remember. But uh, yeah, a very good uh, collection. I, I recommend if you're not familiar with Norman Greenbaum, Beyond Spirit of the Sky, Spirit in the Sky, uh, give him a try. And. Uh, I had had, this is another artist that I'd had compilations of uh, from, you know, now and then through my collection, Jimi Hendrix. Uh, but I decided uh, a couple months ago, since he only had three studio albums in his lifetime, I figured I might as well check him out. I think I showed you guys, um, uh, what's the, the first one? I, I, my brain is farting out on me. Uh, his first one, oh, um, Are You Experienced? The Jimi Hendrix Experience, their first album. I have that one on CD. I think I've had that for a while. I don't know if it was in my collection when I was in, at that spot in my CD collection series, but anyway, I have that one, honest. And uh, uh, so I also picked up his sophomore album, Axis Bold as Love, which I think of his three, you know, while he was alive studio albums, I think it's my favorite, as well as Electric Ladyland. Uh, a massive talent as I'm sure everybody who's into music knows. And then another artist, uh, I heard her, her big hit song on, it was either on the radio or it was in the music in a restaurant or something a couple months back, and I decided, I, I shazammed it because I couldn't remember who it was, and it was this artist, and I decided to go ahead and check her albums out, and it was right around that time that I saw, over at Epic Seconds, they had both of her first two studio albums sitting right there on the $2.50 section, Natalie Imbruglia. Uh, this is her debut album, uh, Left of the Middle, and her sophomore album, uh, White Lily's Island. Both very, very good. She was more, she had a bit more of a rock sound um, throughout her stuff than I realized. I, I didn't know anything beyond her single Torn uh, before I checked her out, before I decided to take a dive into her albums. So, very glad I picked her up. I've been getting more and more into female artists lately, and... Uh, I've been hitting pretty, uh, uh, getting them pretty, pretty right, I guess, you know, uh, h hitting upon good artists, not ones that I, you know, am unimpressed with or anything. Anyway, uh, next one here is by Joe Jackson. This is one of his uh, mid-period, I guess, albums, Laughter and Lust. Uh, this was kind of a light-hearted album. The subject matter was fairly, uh, you know, easygoing. You know, he kind of got into deeper stuff on some of his albums. This one was kind of uh, geared toward... It was kind of like the Velvet Underground's Loaded. It was aimed to be a pop, you know, a, a successful pop chart hits album, sort of. Uh, I don't know if you know the, the story with uh, Loaded, but anyway. Uh, track one on here is called Obvious Song. And uh, he also has a song on here called Hit Single. Uh, so, you know, possibly poking fun at himself or at the record industry. So uh, there's, you know... It, the album is lighthearted, but yeah, he's got some uh, some biting uh, humor and uh, taking jabs at people and uh, perhaps self-deprecating -de humor in some places and satire and that kind of thing. So, yeah, he's a good artist. I've been getting a little bit more into him as uh, time has gone on. I just picked up one of his LPs recently also. And then here's an artist uh, to round out the uh, uh, recent rivals, an artist that I've had his greatest hits, two CD greatest hits, set for a while, but I've never uh, dived into his uh, studio albums, except for uh, one of his more popular albums from the er early 90s, I think. Yeah. Uh, Full Moon Fever. Now you know who I'm talking about. But yeah, never tried out his studio albums beyond that. And I finally decided, okay, I, I think I'm probably going to like this guy. I don't know why I don't just dive into him. There's just so much music out there, you know. You, you, can't, you can't dive into it all at once. But yes, Tom Petty, I picked up his First three studio albums, these were used from Epic Seconds, uh, self-titled. I believe it was self-titled, yeah. And then uh, You're Gonna Get It, and Dan the Torpedoes. All excellent albums. Uh, yeah, some great, great stuff. Uh, of course, Refugee is one of my favorite songs on any of his albums. And uh, yeah, I've... Uh, I, I've only listened to each of them once so far, so I can't really remember a lot of the songs, but... Uh, Yes, I, I was right in that I was going to like his 
his, uh, you know, a deep dive into his studio album. So yeah, good stuff. Let me take a drink real quick here. Sorry to make the camera wiggle, but it's on a uh, <clears throat> a fold-up uh, TV tray thing that I've set the thing. I should at some point I should show you the setup that I do for these videos. Just show you what it is that I'm using. Anyway, on to the actual main part of chapter 17 of my Hold On CD collection. As you recall, at the end of last uh, video, we left off with the King of Rock and Roll, Elvis Presley, and a collection of his son hits. Here we have his self-titled debut album. Uh, this is the expanded uh, reissue. Not the two-disc deluxe. I'm thinking about getting, picking up the two-disc deluxe version at some point. And as well as his follow-up album, Elvis. And, and again, this one is uh, uh, remastered with bonus tracks. I, I'm not a, huge, not a huge Elvis fan, but I love his early stuff. Um, except Hound Dog. One of my hot takes is the Elvis Presley version of Hound Dog is one of the most boring songs I have ever heard in my life. The lyrics are just, you know, if you have not listened to Big Mama Thornton's version of Hound Dog, listen to that one. I love that one. Leaps and bounds more than Elvis Presley for Presley's version. It's got different lyrics, which is the main reason why I love it so much. Uh, anyway, uh, that could be a whole other subject in its own. Next up, Billy Preston. And this CD was from my sister's collection. Uh, yes, a soul and funk artist from the 70s. Uh, yes, this is a great collection. Uh, the One of his big hits was Nothing From Nothing. It's a great, great song. One of my, uh, one of my favorites from the era. Uh, but yes... Uh, it's a great set of hits. Um, if you like 70s funk, I recommend checking out Billy Preston if you haven't. And then we move on to a fairly popular artist. I think a few of you may have heard of him. Prince. Yes, I've got, uh, oh, just three. I thought I had four of his CDs. Uh, 1999, as well as Purple Rain. Purple Rain. And Around the World in a Day. In a Day? Yes, in a Day. Uh, so yeah, his his big hits are really all the prints that I really need, and these were the three uh, his three I think most popular albums. Uh, so yeah, that amount of prints suits me just fine. And then we have a uh, a group that's kind of throws back to the '40s uh, close harmony girl groups like the Andrew Sisters and the Bod Boswell Sisters. We have the Pupini Sisters. Uh, these ladies were active in the 2000s. Yeah, the mid to late 2000s. This is their debut album, Betcha Bottom Dollar. They do a lot of songs from that era, as well as um, more recent songs uh, in the same in the, in this close harmony forty style. So, for instance, here they do um, "I Will Survive," the uh, the seventies disco song. They do a rendition of that and "Heart of Glass," the Blondie song. So, uh, yeah, but they also do "Mr. Sandman," uh, "Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy," and "In the Mood." So, yeah, it's, it's just a great, you know, a great nostalgia act that I happen to love. They haven't done an album in a while. Uh, that was their debut album. This is their sophomore album, The Rise and Fall of Ruby Woo. And, uh, again, this follows kind of the same formula. They do a cover of Walk Like an Egyptian, the Bangles song. And, uh, but then they also do uh, Don't Sit Under the Apple Tree, as well as, uh, oh, it don't mean a thing if, if it ain't got that swing. As well as Spooky, that's the... Uh, I can't remember who did the song originally, but and I can't remember what era it was from. Uh, Life's a little crazy with a spooky little girl like you. That That's how the original song goes. Uh, so yeah, I can't remember what era that was or and whatnot. But uh, yeah, a great album, just as good as their last one. And then they do an album of um, film uh, hits from movies, their album called Hollywood. And they throw one or two originals in here as well. Uh, Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, I Got Rhythm, uh, Good Morning, which was from, was that from The Sound of Music? I can't remember. Oh, no, I think that was from Oklahoma, wasn't it? And uh, Get Happy, Moon River, the uh, Henry Mancini classic. So, yeah, a great group. I, I don't listen to them, to them very often. I have to kind of be in the mood for that stuff, but uh, when I am, it's just wonderful. And then we have an artist of... Uh, uh, much more modern, well, in terms of style of music, much more modern than the Pupiti Sisters. Charlie Puth, uh, this is the deluxe version of his album One Track Mind, and it's got, as you can see, 
uh, a few extra tracks here as well as some bonus tracks here. So uh, hold it up there for a second if you want to freeze frame and look at the track list. Good stuff. And then I have voice notes which I uh, transplanted into a red uh, jewel case. And uh, yeah, standard edition because that's all that I think he ever put out. And uh, the same goes for his most recent album, uh, self-titled. Yeah, my least favorite album of his, I think, but yeah. it's Charlie Puth. I mean, he's he's kind of got he's kind of got that charm, I guess, to some of us anyway, me included. Is that a not so guilty pleasure? I don't know. Anyway, this one I can't remember if I just found it in um, the Epic Sickens dollar section or if this was this was in a bargain bag. I cannot remember, but. Um, and I don't know how to pronounce it either. I think it's pronounced Kumbazu. Uh, this is kind of a world music uh, inspired group, uh, and I, I couldn't tell you where they are from either. Shame on me for not doing my homework for this. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, Wake Up and Dream is the name of this album. Very, very good stuff. Very interesting. Um, it's kind of got some of those world beat uh, uh, beats at the beginning, or and, um, underneath the songs, and the songs are a little bit more, you know, ethnic beats uh, at the at the bass, but in more modern instrumentation on top of it. That's what I'm trying to say. And then we have Queen. Uh, yes, this is another artist that i kind of surprised I haven't gone into their studio albums, but really their three greatest hits albums are pretty much enough for me. Uh, maybe at some point I will start deep diving into their uh, hits, but uh, when you've got three full out, uh, full CDs packed with their hit songs, do you really need more? And this is an interesting uh, album here. This is not typical of Queen Latifah's style, but this is Queen Latifah's album, the Dana Owens album. This is where she takes off into uh, an, a uh, soul and R&B singer, uh, uh, kind of a, a the soul and R&B genre is what I'm trying to say. And she, yeah, she really brings out her singing voice on this one, which is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, yes, I, I'm not much into rap, as I've mentioned before, but uh, when she decided to take a left turn and do two albums like this, I was on board. Uh, yes, this has a lot of the Great American Songbook standards on it, uh, which she does very, very well. And she also does Mercy, 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 which I think is a Marvin Gaye song. And she also does California Dreamin', which was a Mamas and the Papas hit. So, yeah. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous voice, and uh, I loved it enough that I picked up the, her follow-up al follow album, Travel and Light. Uh, same kind of stuff on here. Uh, and, but she, and she features Stevie Wonder on a song on this one. And she does, I think this was a Pointer Sisters song, How Long, Bet You Got a Chick on the Side. And, and I, don't, I don't know if the Pointer Sisters covered that from a previous artist, or if that was a Pointer Sisters original, but anyway. Uh, so yeah. Beautiful pair of albums, this. Uh, if, if, if you love that classic R&B and soul singing, I recommend Queen Latifah's two uh, song uh, albums. They're just fantastic. Her two non-rap albums is what I'm trying to say. Then we have Joshua Radden, I think is how you pronounce uh, his last name. Uh, we Were Here. And I picked this one up because of an album that you will see in... Uh, it's going to be several chapters on from here. It's by a group called Time for Three, and they're kind of a jazz, uh, instrumental jazz uh, group. And on their major label album, they featured Joshua Radden on several songs on vocals. So that's how I came about to learn about Joshua Radden. And uh, I like this one. It's not a favorite of mine, but uh, I've kind of hung on to it because of that connection. And then this one, I think, was in one of my St. Vinnie's Halls, uh, Corinne Bailey Ray, her self, self-titled? Yeah. Album. It's a two-disc set with a, a handful of uh, B-sides, remixes, and, and whatnot on side two, or disc two. Then we have Bonnie Raitt with her album Luck of the Draw. Sorry. I'm... And then we have Bonnie Raitt, uh, Luck of the Draw. This has her hits, uh, Something to Talk About, and I Can't Make You Love Me. I uh, really enjoy her voice. Um, I used to have more of her CDs, but I kind of, you know, uh, just just kind of fell off being really into her. I don't know why. It's not her fault. Trust me. Then we have uh, something a little, little different than uh, Bonnie Raitt. We have the Ramones with their greatest hits. Uh, 
friend of mine who works at a record store, he's way, way, way into the Ramones, so he would probably uh, wag his finger at me for me only having one Ramones album and a collection at that. But uh, this is pretty much all the Ramones I really need. Uh, but another an artist that I do have more than one album of, I actually have four by this group, Robert Randolph and the Family Band, and I kind of stumbled upon these guys totally by accident, uh, which I'll explain in just a minute when I get to the appropriate CD. But uh, yeah, these guys have, they do soul, blues, a, a little bit of funk, uh, and a little bit of gospel in it, uh, just kind of all mixed together. It's a uh, very interesting, very fun band to listen to. Very, uh, well, a very fulfilling band to listen to. They're not, they're not, they're not always fun. But uh, they're very, very talented. And uh, yes, this is their album, Unclassified. And then I picked it. I kind of worked backwards through their catalog, uh, you know, the extent of their catalog that I have. Uh, so this is their next album, Colorblind. I really enjoy this one. And this features Eric Clapton, Dave Matthews, and uh, Leela James and a couple, of, a couple of other artists. And uh, like most of their albums, they do, you know, as I, as I mentioned, the, the soul, the funk, a little bit of blues and a little bit of gospel are kind of all mixed in. They do go much more full-on gospel on other albums that I don't have. So, I mean, if you like gospel music with kind of a bit of a bluesy or soulful uh, texture to it, check out Robert Randolph and the Family Band. And then uh, probably my favorite of their albums is Lickety Split. I, I love this one. This has got so many great, catchy songs on it. Uh, it's got Carlos, Carlos Santana on a couple of tracks on here. Uh, Trombone Shorty features on another track. But uh, yeah, Amped Up is a great song on here. Uh, Brand New Wayo is one of the songs featuring Carlos Santana. And let's see, uh, Love Roller Coaster is a good one. Get Ready is a great song. Uh, but the album that started it all... Is called Get Soul, and this is from uh, 2017. And I I was at a, uh, and I actually can't remember how I found out about this. I think they had a flyer at, at uh, House of Records. Somebody up in the north part of Eugene was having a weekend CD sale. You know, that's how he advertised it. You know, it's a yard sale, but it was just nothing but CDs. And I think there was, there were some cassettes on it out there as well. But uh, yeah, I was kind of sifting through the CDs. They had a lot of uh, gospel, blues, jazz. Jazz was what they mainly had, and kind of the adjacent stuff like soul and blues and, and stuff and like that. And this was hiding in there, so a lot of the stuff that I saw was stuff that I had never really never heard of. And this was one of the guys that I'd never heard of. And uh, so I picked it up, but uh, one of the things that kind of kind of sold me on it was uh, the fact that Darius Rucker was uh, featured in it. I mean, I'm not a not particularly a fan of Darius Rucker's solo country work, but I have Hootie and the Blowfish, one of their albums, or more than one, I can't remember. But uh, yeah, I listened to this. Uh, it was kind of a blind or deaf purchase. Had never heard of these guys. Uh, listened to it, and I really enjoyed it. So that's kind of got me on the uh, uh, crusade, if you will, of picking up their three previous albums. And uh, so yeah. Very good artist, and, and they have put out an album, it was it last year or the year before, I have not checked that one out yet, uh, maybe I will at some point. Anyway, uh, yes, I, this video is becoming kind of long, I'm going to try to, I'm almost halfway done, so let's let's keep going. The Rascals, uh, this is uh, their, their anthology, a two-disc set, uh, it was sold in a chubby, you know, chubby two-disc case, but I pared it down to a one-disc, or a, a single-width case, but yeah, two, two CDs packed with their hits. One of those great uh, bands, I, I think they're an American band, they were kind of in response to the British invasion of the 60s. Good stuff. <clears throat> and then we have Lou Rawls. Uh, this was, I can't remember where I got this, in, uh, oh no, it was at a St. Vinny's store. I got it for one dollar, but yeah, it was uh, the Capital Jazz and Blues Sessions, uh, the best of, and it's got uh, 20 songs on here. And uh, I, I've always enjoyed Lou Rawls. Uh, I've only ever had a, some compilations of his, but as I decided, you know, take a, a little dive into this one, take a chance on this one for a dollar. You know, big risk, right? But uh, yeah, lots of great, a lot of great stuff on here, and he is just, 
he's just so good at whatever he sings. Uh, and actually, it was actually after I picked up that one, uh, I had had a one disc kind of, you know, one of those uh, very short, like 10 or 12 track best of CDs of Lou Rawls. But I, you know, I just, I like him so much that I decided to upgrade to the two disc essential Lou Rawls. And I'm so glad I did. This guy is underrated. I mean, he makes, his voice is just, it's like singing is as easy to him as breathing. I mean, it's just, just, the voice just comes out of him so effortlessly. Kind of like, um, and I don't know if it's, you know, just because, uh, you know, I kind of was tuned into it when I was listening to it or, or what, but kind of like with Mel Torme, you know, it's just, he is so, you know, so much better than I expected him to be and was the case with Lou Rawls. I mean, just fantastic. If you want some great 60s soul, you know, I mean, hey, Otis Redding is is great, and uh, Wilson Pickett's great, uh, fantastic. Lou Rawls is a bit more on the subdued side of soul, if you like that stuff. So check out Lou Rawls. Don't sleep on him. He's great. Then we have, uh, I have a six-block uh, section of this band's discography, R.E.M., uh, starting off with Document, and uh, the song uh, It's the End of the World as We Know It, as well as, there was another one, wasn't there? Maybe not. I can't remember. I thought there was another song on that album that I really enjoyed, but uh, don't want to waste too much time here. Uh, then followed by Green, and of course uh, Orange Crush, and Stand are the two big songs on there. Then we have Out of Time, uh, of course, Losing My Religion, and Shiny Happy People. And I must have known, but I didn't really realize, or I, I didn't remember until recently, that uh, one of the vocalists from R.E.M., or from uh, the B-52s, was on Shiny Happy People. I should have known it was her because it's like, it's, you know, that voice from the B-52s, the female vocalist. How can you not recognize it? Anyway, then we have Automatic for the People, and we have um, Everybody Hurts, of course, is the big hit, Man on the Moon. And then they took a foray into, kind of into a hard rock sort of thing with Monster. Uh, What's the Frequency, Kenneth, and Crush with Eyeliner, Bang and Blame is a great song. And uh, round it out with New Adventures in Hi-Fi. I have not been compelled really to go um, forward or backward from this block of REM CDs that I have, but uh, maybe at some point I will. I don't know. Then we have a couple of CDs that uh, came about because of a uh, bargain bag thing, which you might remember if you watch Bargain Bag. The Real McCoy. It was uh, This is, is not the one that was in the bargain bag. This is their first album, Another Night. Kind of like Ace of Bass is basically the, the musical lane that they're in. Uh, but this one, uh, one more time, is the one that was in a bargain bag and compelled me to pick up their first album. So, yeah, good stuff. And as I recall, it was, I think it was my favorite bargain bag CD of that year. Maybe my second favorite. Then here we have Redbone. Uh, this is a group of, as you can kind of tell from their... Uh, attire, uh, Native American musicians. And I, I am all for Native American music. That's one of the most underrepresented um, uh, ethnicities in music, I think, is Native Americans. And uh, yeah, this one I found at one of the everyday music stores up in Portland. And as I recall, it was going for, at least at the time, I'm not sure what it's going for now, $25, $30, $35, dollars, like on eBay and Amazon and stuff. And it was at uh, Epic Second or uh, Everyday Music for $12.99. So I got a real good score at the time. So yeah, I was very happy to pick this one up. And then we have a three CD block of Red Hot Chili Peppers discography. I've got their, who is it? Uh, uh, Rick Rubin albums, uh, uh, Blood Sugar Sex Magic as well as One Hot Minute. And this one, as I recall, is backed with their Warped CD single. Because the song Melancholy Mechanics, uh, for some reason, I really enjoy that song. And uh, so, yeah, there's there's the Warped CD single on the back of the uh, jewel case. So. And then Californication. 
So yeah, good stuff. And again, this is another band that I have not really gone beyond that part. I've tried to get into their last two or three uh, new release albums, and just for some reason they just didn't stick. Uh, their classic stuff, for some reason, sticks. I don't know what it is. Anyway, uh, speaking just a minute ago about Otis Redding. Look, it's Otis Redding. That's his uh, greatest hits album of his. Um, These Arms of Mine, My Yai Yai. And then we have uh, Try a Little Tenderness, Sitting on the Dock of the Bay, of course. Then we have the best of Helen Reddy. Yes, uh, Are you ready for Helen Reddy? And uh, I Am Woman, the classic feminist anthem of hers. Uh, let's see, what are the other, some of the other good songs on here? Uh, I Believe in Music. Of course, I'm going to glom onto that one with me and my the song, songs about music that I love. And she does Hit the Road Jack, the uh, Ray Charles hit. Uh, Ain't No Way to Treat a Lady, Delta Dawn. She does that song too, so. Good artist. It's warm out today. Yes, we've... Uh, We've got the windows closed up because it is 92 degrees out there right now. So, yeah. A little heat wave, a little sooner than usual for the uh, Western Oregon area. Anyway, uh, speaking of heat wave, how could I... or no? No, yes, love is like a heat wave. I did not plan that at all, talking about our little heat wave here. When pulling out the CD, honest, complete coincidence, Martha Reeves and the Vandal Vandellas. Their big hit, Heat Wave. Uh, so, yeah. And, well, you know the Martha Reeves and the Vandella songs. I don't have to give you the track list. They're all great. Motown is up there. Motown is so up there, my hand's cut off from the frame. That's how high up there Motown is. Anyway, uh, Amer American Idol shout-out here, Haley Reinhardt. She was a third place, or was she second place? Uh, to... Uh, I believe Scotty McCreary, so it was uh, season 11, I think. But yeah, I, I always enjoyed her, sometimes a little bit more than Scotty. But yes, this was, I believe, the Target exclusive uh, version. It had like three or four bonus tracks compared to the original. But yeah, very good stuff, and although I think I might actually like this album a little better, her follow-up, uh, What's That Sound? She does a lot of covers of uh, classic songs. Uh, for what it's worth, which is is in a way the title the title track. What's that sound? Uh, the letter. And uh, let's see, sunny afternoon, a, co a cover of the Kinks song. And these boots are made for walking. The Nancy Sinatra hit. So yeah, time of the season. The zombies hit, featuring Casey Abrams, another American Idol alumnus. So if you don't have this album and you're an American Idol fan, grab it. Then we have uh, the only album that I have by this group they've they've put out, oh, more than a dozen albums, I think, Reliant K. And this is a covers album. It, it seem, it's a little more often than not that the only album that I have by a particular artist happens to be a covers album. I guess maybe that's just like the the easiest uh, point of entry to, to, to test the waters of an artist, I guess, is to check out a covers album. But yeah, they do everything from Cyndi Lauper to Justin Bieber to Chicago to They Might Be Giants to Weezer to Toto, Tears for Fears, Stone Temple Pilots, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Uh, so yeah, and they do all those songs really well. So it's, it's a fun album if you do not have that one. So we're at the halfway point in my block of 90. Let me take a drink here. <clears throat> when I talk that much, uh, my throat starts getting a little dry. So, But I hope you're having as much fun as I am. Moving on, we have an artist that um, I don't think very many of you, if any of you, have heard of. They're called Relish. Now, there there is more than one group out there called Relish. These guys are from Australia. And one of the guys... Let me see if I can look up his name real quick. I'm probably not going to... Uh, well, I can talk while I'm looking it up. These guys are kind of like, their style is kind of like Lenny Kravitz. So if you like Lenny Kravitz, you're going to like these guys. Oh, let's see here. Shoot, where's his name? Oh, there, there they are right there. Let me see here. Uh, Ken Poppenfuss is the uh, the leader of the uh, band, the, the front man. And his 
Uh, his brother Carl Poppenfuss is also a member. Where was I going with this? Oh, they did, or at least Ken Poppenfuss, gained some amount of notoriety in the States for writing the songs for a movie. And I want to say it was The Rocker, the movie with Ryan Wilson. Is it Rain Wilson or Ryan Wilson? It, it's spelled like it should be pronounced Ryan, not Rain. But anyway, Rain Wilson and uh, uh, Teddy Geiger, pre-transition Teddy Geiger. A good movie, by the way. And yes, I think he wrote the songs for that movie. And uh, yes, a Teddy Geiger performed most of them. But anyway, that's that's where I was getting at with uh, the front man for Relish. But yes, these guys sound kind of like Lenny Kravitz, as I was saying. So if you like Lenny Kravitz, give these guys a try. Um, Rainbow Zephyr is a fantastic song. It's one of those uplifting, feel-good songs. And it's, it's got a piano behind it, so it kind of, it's almost like it gives like a gospel feel to it. So check out Rainbow Zephyr. And they also do a song called Heart-Shaped Box, but it is not the Nirvana song. It's an original. But uh, yeah, Natural High. Oh, and gosh, uh, Let It Fly is another good one. You I'm Thinking Of is a great song as well. So. And they also put out one other album called Karma Calling. And... Uh, Interesting cover on this one. Very interesting cover. And let's see. Um, uh, look, I, I can't think of any of the songs that, really good songs that come off the top of my head from the, uh, thing. sorry about the silence there. But uh, yeah, I love these guys. I'm kind of sorry that they didn't put out more than two albums. And oh, and these are both, by the way, the Japanese uh, versions with extra tracks. And yes, and the cover of their first album, Wildflowers, uh, the Japanese cover is different than the cover everywhere else in the everywhere else in the world. Trivia note. Uh, next one we have up here is a band called Remy Zero, and this is their major label debut, I think, uh, Villa Elaine. And Remy Zero's claim to fame is uh, one of the tracks on this album, uh, The Golden Hum, is. Save Me, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Brain Farts, and which was used as the uh, theme song from the TV series Smallville. So that is Remy Zero's claim to fame. Good stuff. And uh, if, you know, if you've heard the song Save Me, pretty much the rest of their uh, sound is like that. I'd say that's a good representation of their sound. And this one is uh, a fairly recent album from last year, I think. Uh, it is... What's her name? Oh, Ren for short is uh, her name, and it's all strung together as one word, Ren for short. Uh, and this is um called Dear Amelia. And the, I found out about this one because uh, Jake Bug guests on one uh, track, and he actually he promoted it on his Facebook channel, uh, or his Facebook feed. So that's how I heard about it. Sampled it online and sounded pretty good. So I checked it out. Not one of my favorite albums, and I'm honestly not sure if it's going to stay in my collection much longer, but it was good. Then we have an artist named Kyle Ryabko. He is Canadian, and he hasn't done an album in quite a while, I don't think, at least not that I've heard. Uh, this is a six-track EP that he put out um, in, uh, in anticipation of his major label debut. Uh, he's a very, very good, very good artist. Uh, rock with a little bit of blues. Uh, and this is his debut full-length album, Before I Speak. Mm, excuse me. And uh, yes, as I said, rock and rock pop with a little bit of funk, a little bit of uh, a little bit of blues, just a tiny bit of blues in it. But yeah, he's just great, and he's got a great voice, and uh, just very, very, ta very, very talented. The title song is great. Paranoid is a great, great song. Um, what Did I Get Myself Into is another fantastic song. Oh. <clears throat> what was the one? Oh, I guess it was Paranoid. It was the one I was thinking of. Uh, my, one, of my favorite, one of my favorite lyrics in any song is in the song Paranoid. My life is a twister, so bear with me, sister. I love that lyric. And so, yeah. In, in some ways, it's just for that lyric alone that I keep this album. No, not really, no. All the songs are good on it. Anyway. 
Uh, funny story with this album, uh, Lionel Richie's Tuskegee. And uh, this is actually the only Lionel Richie I have on CD. I have the three, I think all three of his classic album, 80s albums on vinyl. But yes, funny uh, story with this album. Uh, it was at House of Records when they sell their used CDs. The cases are uh, out for display, but the cases are empty and the CDs are locked behind the counter. Uh, this case was there. I liked what I saw on the track listing. This, by the way, is uh, his classic hits and some of the Commodore's classic hits done in a country style as duets with country artists. Great idea, and is, its execution is fantastic. Anyway, took it up to the counter, and they looked for five, almost ten minutes, looking for the CD. It wasn't where it was supposed to be, so they said, well, we'll, do, we'll keep the case back here. If we find the CD, we'll call you and let you know. So a couple weeks later, I was at, I think it was Barnes & Noble, and this was in like the four ninety nine section, so I said, okay, I'll pick it up here. And then about four or five weeks after that, they finally called me and said, House of Records finally called me and said, hey, we found the CD. So I had to tell them, sorry, guys, I bought it somewhere else. But uh, yes, this is a great album. I hope you enjoyed that story. Uh, great album. Blake Shelton, Jason Aldean, Darius Rucker. He's, he's popping up all, all over the place, isn't he? Uh, Kenny Chesney, Rascal Flatts, Tim McGraw, Shia, uh, Shania Twain, Shiana Twain. Uh, Kenny Rogers, Willie Nelson. I mean, he pulls in all the names on this album. But uh, yeah, it's a great album. And I love uh, when artists try out hit songs in, uh, in another genre and, you know, kind of transplant them to another genre. Uh, the results are not always great, but sometimes they are. And again, this is kind of a, a testament to uh, the songwriting behind Lionel Richie's catalog is how well it translates to a country setting. Next up, we have a British artist. Uh, this is a Japanese CD. Yes, I do still have the Obi. A few of the Japanese CDs, I do not no longer have the Obis. But uh, Adam Rickett, he was a teen pop. Um, I think he started out as an actor, but he forayed into singing. Uh, very much late 90s, early 2000s, synth-heavy teen pop is what this is. So from that perspective, nothing really new, but it's catchy stuff, so I keep it. And I'm sorry, this video is going to be over an hour, I think, so sorry about that. But I hope you enjoy these videos. I just keep rambling on. I'm going to try to stop my rambling. Um, the Righteous Brothers. Uh, this is one of the 20th Century Millennium Collection ones. A little Latin loopy loo, and of course you've lost that love and feeling. They're a big, big hit. And uh, You're My Soul and Inspiration. Sometimes these, uh, you know, 10, 12 track CDs aren't enough. But with some artists, in my case, the Righteous Brothers, it's enough. It's got all the real good hits that I care about. Uh, this next one doesn't need much of an uh, explanation because you just saw it in my uh, uh, bargain bag video, the Rin Ken Band, uh, with their album uh, Banji. I, I, already, I, pray, I sung its praises, figuratively speaking, in my Broken Bag video. So, uh, And now here we have a world idol. This, this guy was, I think he only came in like fifth in the Australian idol. I can't remember what year. I think it was, I can't remember. Uh, Carl Reisley is his name. And he, as suggested by the back cover photo, he also plays trumpet. And uh, his albums are a bit, more, a bit of a jazz uh, uh, influence. And uh, yeah, he does some songs, uh, uh, covers of songs like uh, the Chicago hit, Does Anybody Really Know What Time It Is, and uh, Pure Imagination, the uh, uh, the classic show tune, and the Boss Skag song, Lido, Sh Lido Shuffle. We've only just begun the Carpenter song. So just for the track listing, these albums are great. This is his sophomore album, um, The Stillest Hour. I really enjoy this guy. He's, um, yeah, one of my favorites. Uh, you know, unless you're plugged into the Australian idol scene, you will have never heard of this guy, but uh, I really enjoyed him. And coming up here, we have what I believe I christened a couple of years ago as my number one favorite Canadian album of all time. Uh, we Were Born in a Flame by the Sam Roberts Band. Love this stuff. Uh, I'd call it Americana, but it's Canadian, so Canadiana or North Americana. This, this album is just packed with uh, great... Hooky songs, they're not really meant to be hooky, but for some reason they are. Uh, Don't Walk Away, Eileen. Brother Down is a song that was released as a single in the States, never really gained traction, and I still I, I still hate the, the fact that it 
they just never took off here in the States. But yeah, a great band. Fantastic. Check this album out if you haven't yet. Amazing. And we have, this was a recent bargain bag CD, I believe. Jennifer Robin with Fish Up a Tree. Still trying to figure out what that title means. And then we come along to Porter Robinson. Uh, this is his, I don't know if this was his debut album. Um, Worlds. Yes, I'm. apparently my brain is just not in the mode of remembering song uh, album titles today. So yes, that was uh, that one. But this is the album that kind of uh, brought Porter Robinson to my attention. This is Nurture. And you'll notice Jewel Case because this is the Japanese version. <clears throat> Loved the album so much that I had to spring for the Japanese version. Which I will often do if it's available in a jewel case and the domestic version is not. So. And here we have, uh, well, kind of like, uh, apparently not only am I not remembering uh, album titles, I'm not remembering artist names, Lionel Richie, there we go, that I just mentioned a few minutes ago. Smokey Robinson, this is a duets album called Smokey and Friends. Well, let's see, who do we have here? Elton John, Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. Uh, John Legend, Cheryl Crow, James Taylor, Mary J. Blige. It's a great album, and he does uh, Motown songs or, you know, Smokey Robinson and the Miracle songs duets with these artists and a couple other artists on here that I didn't mention. Great album. I can't remember how I found out about this. Was this in my sister's collection? I think it might have been. Or was it? I cannot remember. No, 2014, so no, it would not have been my Citrus Collection. Then we have one that I picked up. This was just a few weeks ago that I picked this up. Uh, heard about these guys, I think, on another YouTuber's channel. They're called Rock Pile, and this was a super group of sorts. I cannot remember right now uh, what other bands these artists are from. Look up Rock Pile on Wikipedia. You'll find out the information there. But they only put out one album. And uh, this CD actually contains the album plus the tracks from an EP that they did right before or right after they released uh, the album Seconds of Pleasure. That's what the album was called. So great stuff, kind of power popish, a little bit of uh, a little bit of kind of fifties uh, rockabilly or Motown and Motown bits mixed in with uh, power pop. Interesting stuff. My mustache is itching. Anyway. Uh, this one was from my sister's collection. Uh, Jimmy Rogers, the best of. Uh, great uh, early rock and roll, kind of rockabilly-ish artist. Uh, Honeycomb was his big hit. He passed away last year or the year before. But uh, yeah, Born to Lose, Oh, Oh, I'm Falling in Love Again. again. Uh, Danny Boy, he does a cover of that. It Keeps on Right a Hurtin'. Oh, It Keeps Right on a Hurtin'. It keeps right on a hurtin'. That's what I was trying to say. See, my voice is going. I'm glad I only have about uh, 15, 20 more CDs left. Let's let's kind of ring this to the, uh, bring it on home, as they say. Olivia Rodrigo with her album Sour. Uh, great album. I did not expect to enjoy this as much as I did. Uh, I may be talking about this in a video coming up fairly soon, so I don't want to go too much into it. Besides, as I said, the video is getting long enough. Kenny Rogers. Uh, his uh, 45? No, 42 Ultimate Hits. The picture that I'm looking at as I'm filming is reversed, so I have to read backwards. But yes, everything on this album um, just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in. That was from uh, his group, uh, the first edition, which just reminds me I need to see if that CD is still at House of Records so I can pick it up. And uh, his solo stuff, his hits with the first edition, his duets, uh, are everything, his biggest hits are on here. This is 42 Ultimate Hits. Then we have, uh, this one I believe was a CD that Noah sent me. It's a live album by Rolling Stones, Flashpoint. And I, as you can see, this it did not originally be, uh, come as a two disc, it was just a one disc. So I, But I piggybacked it with their single, Like a Rolling Stone. And that one was in my sister's CD collection. So the one disc from Noah piggybacked with one from my sister. So I figure that's kind of a cool, cool little uh, 
companion type thing. It makes it more special. Special in two different ways at the same time in one package. Yay. And then we have their Greatest Hits album, 40 Licks. This one was put out in 2002. Lots of Greatest Hits albums came out in 2002. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a video on that, I think, at some point. But yes, again, kind of like with Kenny Rogers, all their big hits are on here. Then we have another hits collection by another group, The Romantics. Yep, this um, <clears throat> a power pop group. They kind of went into the new wave thing, uh, What I Like About You. And then they have uh, Talking in Your Sleep was kind of their, I don't know if you'd call it a comeback song, but that was their that was their big hit of the seven of their of the eighties, excuse me. And uh, so yeah, decent little collection from a decent little band, I have to say. Then this one is the fault of my sister. She kind of got me an, into this artist, Linda Ronstadt. Uh, she had one of her uh, one of her smaller greatest hits albums was in her collection that I inherited from her, and I decided to upgrade to her, this big, um, extra long Greatest Hits album. It's got, what, 20 songs on it? 21 songs. And yes, I've actually picked up a few of her uh, albums on vinyl since then, so yes, she is a great artist. And then a couple of uh, CDs here from a band called Rooney, uh, and they were pretty popular in the UK. They actually have Two albums, um, their first album, self-titled, and their sophomore album, Calling the World. But this was actually a band from California. But they never hit it big here in the States. Very weird, ironic how that happened. But, and they've got, a, they've got a totally California sound to them, as kind of suggested by the uh, presence of the California state flag's bear on the cover of their first album. But yeah, some great, uh, pretty much power pop with, as I said, with a bit of a... Uh, um, what do they call it? A bit of a Laurel Canyon sound. If Laurel Canyon had a rock sound, that's kind of what uh, Rooney would be like. Uh, blind side. Oh, no, excuse me. Blue side. Sorry. I need to get my eyes checked, and I, I think I'm going to need to update my prescription. Anyway. Uh, Simply Because is another great song. I'm Shaken is a fantastic one. And yes, both of their albums are fantastic. And as for their sophomore album, Calling the World... Uh, when Did Your Heart Go Missing is a great one. Uh, I Should Have Been After You. Are You Afraid is a great song. Paralyzed is, is awesome. So yeah, just you know, one song after another is fantastic. Then we have another band. Uh, this is a this was a UK band, I think. They're called Rooster. And if you think that Greta Van Fleet does a great... Um, yeah, Greta, Greta Van Fleet does a great impersonation of... Led Zeppelin, but Rooster actually, in my opinion, does a better one in that they make it different enough from Led Zeppelin, but you can tell that they were influenced by Zeppelin and other hard rock bands of the era, but these guys have uh, much more of a, uh, a sound of their own. And yes, I've got uh, two albums of theirs. Both of them are the Japanese versions, but uh, Come Get Some is a great song. They have a bit more... Actually, these guys have a little bit more of a funk edge than uh, than Zeppelin would. Uh, Staring at the Sun. Platinum Blind is a good song. It talks about the dangers of uh, getting yourself too deep in debt. Uh, credit card debt and otherwise. Yeah. Platinum credit cards. That's where the song the song title comes from, Platinum Blind. Uh, Drag the Sunrise Down. That's another really good one. And their sophomore album, uh, Circles and Satellites. It's another, another good one. And yes, there's the Obi strip from Japanese edition. Uh, I Come Alive is perhaps my favorite song of theirs. Perhaps not. Oh, Unexpectedly, that's a great song. So yes, check out Rooster if you haven't yet. If they're even available on Spotify, I don't know. Then we have a recent bargain bag. Well, this might have been from last year. Uh, Blue by Diana Ross, an album that she made in the early 80s, and it was shelved until like 2004 or 2006. Uh, covers of classic pop songs. Great stuff. Then we have two albums by Emmy Rossum. Those of you who uh, the name might be familiar, uh, she was the lead actress for most of the run of the TV series Shameless. It was a Showtime uh, original series uh, based on a UK series. Yes, uh, she played Fiona, the main character. And yes, she's got a great singing voice as well. 
Uh, this album, yeah, this album has pretty much all original songs, but she made a follow-up called Sentimental Journey that is a an album of covers of classic pop songs. The Object of My Affection, I'm Looking Over a Four-Leaf Clover. So this is kind of going back to songs, you know, pop songs that are, go so far back they could be almost be t uh, described as classic folk songs. You know, um, uh, I'll Be With You in Apple Blossom Time, Nobody knows, knows You When You're Down and Out, uh, Autumn Leaves. So, yeah. She has a beautiful voice, great pair of albums that she put out, and I think those are the only two albums she's put, she's put out. Uh, let's go on to Roxette. Uh, this is their big hit album, Look Sharp. It's got the songs The Look and Listen to Your Heart on it, uh, and other great songs as well. Then we get into a British pop singer called Rumor. Uh, her voice reminds me a lot of um, Karen Carpenter. She's just got that beautiful, airy, flowing, almost effortless voice that Car Karen Carpenter has had. Uh, but yes, great, beautiful song. These are kind of like uh, this. Is a, these are great albums to put on for at like a, on like a Sunday morning. Nice, laid back, easy listening stuff. And her sophomore album, Boys Don't Cry, is an album of cover songs. And then her third album, Into the Light, uh, Into Color, not Into the Light, Into Color. And this is a great one as well. Oh, and uh, yeah, this one, as well as Shadows of My Soul, her debut, which I showed you a second ago. Uh, yeah, these are both the Japanese versions. And her, no, I don't think this is her most recent album. It's the most recent one of hers that I have. Um, this Girl's in Love is a Back Rack and David tribute album. Fantastic. Of course, you know, the Backrack David songbook is one of the... It's, it's, it's almost as up there. It's, it's, my hand's still cutting off the uh, in the frame, but it's just about as up there as Motown, I gotta say. Then we have a New Zealand artist named Bik Runga. And uh, her big hit was, I think it was called Sway. And I can't remember which album it's on. But yes, I've got uh, all, all three, or at least the first three of her albums, Drive, as well as uh, Beautiful Collision. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember if Sway was her hit song or not. We'll have to look it up. And her third album, Birds. Fantastic stuff. She's, she's got a beautiful voice. I'm not sure how to describe it. It's just, it's just a pretty, pretty voice. And almost, as, almost as pretty as she is. And I'm like, isn't she pretty? I believe she is part Aboriginal uh, in in uh, in her uh, uh, heritage, I guess you'd say. Then we have uh, Moving Pictures by Rush. This, okay, this is the only Rush album that I have, and this was on the freebie shelf at House of Records. So that's, in a way, that's the only only reason I have it. I know, crucify me if you will, but. Yeah, Rush is just one of those artists that I just have not quite yet been able to get into. Um, it's been a while, actually, since I've listened to this one, so I really need to... Everybody talks Rush up big time. A lot of people love Rush. Uh, I have not gotten there yet. Don't know if I will. But... And I intend to do a video about uh, artists or bands that I just have not been able to get into for whatever reason. Not artists or bands that I dislike or hate, just haven't been able to get into. So I want to make that clear. That is the case with Rush. I don't hate them. I just haven't been able to get into them. Okay, the last artist and the last three CDs uh, before this video gets too much painful, more painfully long, Rusted Root. And these guys brought, were brought to my attention by my good friend, my little brother, Noah. Uh, he, he brought my attention to a song, thought I would like, or actually was probably was sure that I had heard for, before and enjoyed, but I hadn't heard the song before. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I liked them enough that I picked up a few of their albums. Uh, when I Woke, <clears throat> can I name the song that uh, he was talking about? No, I can't. But I think it was on this album. Uh, but I got that one. And then their next album, Remember. And their self-titled album. And yes, these guys, Rusted Root, have, uh, as their name kind of suggests, a, a bit of a Americana mixed with world music kind of a sound. If you can, if you can imagine both of those 
genres kind of blended together. They, they have a unique sound to them, I've got to say. And now finally, it's, this has probably happened before, but finally with this video, I am stopping at the end of a discography of an artist. I always seem to stop my videos in the middle of an artist's discography, but not the case today. But anyway, this video has gone on long enough. That'll do it for chapter 17 of my whole darn CD collection. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't don't forget <laughs> don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.